Hi guys, I just thought I would do this video much shorter and have Joel added on to what follows behind. This is an extremely important explanation, especially for anybody who may be watching these videos for the first time and are shocked to learn that the Lord Jesus Christ is already back, being recognized and announced by Pope Benedict XVI, who is Peter, Simon Peter, the reincarnate of the original Peter. Um, this is a lesson for all, and I'd like to point out, as you'll understand after I have explained everything to you, why it is too late for Francis and those who are with him. Now, I'm quoting from Matthew uh, chapter 12, starting from verse 30. It was Jesus, Brian, Yahweh, speaking then, however, all being fulfilled now. Often he spoke, or well, mostly always he spoke, there were two parts to the timing of everything. He was speaking then, and he was also foretelling of this day now. Whenever he said in that day, it's always in reference to this day now, this generation, when he is back, the reincarnate word of God. So quoting Matthew 30, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Verse 31, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be give, forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So what does it mean? Jesus, he was called the Son of Man. He went to the cross. He gave up the ghost. The ghost, the Holy Ghost, returned the resurrected soul. And for 49 days he walked around presenting himself to all of those who were a witness to seeing him after the resurrection. So what he was saying is that all manner of sin would be forgiven men up until the point that he was dead on the cross. In other words, not there, the ghost had left. Once he returned, that is the resurrection, the Holy Ghost now coming back, walking around over the flesh body, still known as Jesus. Anybody who spoke against him from that point on, it would not be forgiven him. I want you to think about that. And then I want you to hear what it is that I wrote, first of all, to Pope Benedict before he began speaking through the email to the Christ. I called it, I softened him up. I want you to think about this and compare this to the actions of Francis, who has indeed committed the unpardonable sin. He will never ever be forgiven, nor will anybody who has sided with him, or anybody who has spoken against Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall in his lifetime. They have already committed the unpardonable sin. It's a done deal, automatic pilot, cannot be retracted. They sealed their fate. This is behind the scenes. I'm writing through instant messaging. To the Roman Pontiff Emeritus, Pope Benedict XVI, Peter Hirock. I come into my email to find 
On the morning of Monday the 11th of March, at 6.16 a.m., a message had been left for me. Are you the spouse of Mr. Brian Golightly Marshall, was the question. <laughs> I had already been to Brian's email just to check it to see what was there, and I read two emails that had been sent already by Benedict XVI, and they weren't cosy at all. They were objectionable. Don't call me this, don't call me that. And what makes you think you are the Christ? You are indeed not Christ, etc., etc. So before Brian Yahweh got home, he was delayed a little. The angels have a habit of that. I wrote this in response to reading those two emails. So, are you the spouse of Mr. Brian Galati Marshall? I say, I am. I have read the emails you sent the Christ. He will respond when he reads them himself. I would remind you that unless you become like a small child, that you will not enter nor see the kingdom of God. I would also remind you that the Son of Man must suffer many things in this evil generation, was the answer J Jesus gave after his disciples asked him what it would be like at the time of his second coming. Read Luke chapter 17, verses 22 to 25. Everything Jesus did and said was a prophetic message for those close to him that all would be fulfilled in this time now, his second coming. Quoting, coming in all of his glory. All of his glory is his body of flesh, as it is for all reincarnated souls. The Christ family is Essene and the teaching of Nicodemus when he came to Jesus at night in fear of the Jews. The conversation with Nicodemus was lengthy and explained the many lifetimes the soul would live like the rising and setting of the sun. All souls are gathered upon the earth now for the judgment of God. The supper of God is a feast of flesh by fowls of the air, and the reapers are the angels who have already been given the go-ahead by the Christ to begin the reaping of the wicked. Should you die, having rejected the Christ in the flesh, then you will go the way of all of those who have perpetrated the filth in the church and the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not. The Christ is the angel of the revelation who measures the temple which is the earth. The altar of the Lord is the great pyramid and that is exactly what he has done over 20 years of toil. The truth lies in the measure that is in the numbers of the creation, not the words of ancient books that have been manipulated by man. As for the protocols of the church, they will be destroyed. The protocols of the church have brought to ruin countless millions of lives while the suffering of the meek continues in this day when the wealth of the Christ creation is in the hands of the devil. That day is over because of the revelation of the Christ, who, if you know your scripture, has a new name. Read Revelation 3.12. Read it and then go over to Revelation 19.12 and 13. It plainly warns the world that not only would Jesus have a new name, it would be a name written that only he would know, and the name is the Word of God. In other words, he would reveal it when he gets back. When the world has been devoured by the beast of religion, ruled by evil men in high places who care more about protocol than having the heart of Jesus. Pomp and ceremony is far from the heart of Jesus that makes him sick, while the suffering of the meek and the children of the world. Jesus was a man, God in the flesh, and he is a man, God in the flesh, in the second incarnation. If you, like the rest of the devoured world, have been expecting a floaty ghost, riding clouds or a big white horse, then you too have been duped. Jesus spoke in parables. The name Marshal is Hebrew and is Marishal, which means parable, the thief in the night. No one knows when a thief comes until after the advent, as for the day and the hour of his coming, yada, yada, yada. It is that point when I get a response. <laughs> hey, I'm just the messenger. Also, the Holy Father requested a specific time for Mr. Brian Golightly Marshall to email him back. Thanks so much for your patience. God bless you. I speak on behalf of His Holiness and I have set up a Facebook page to pay a tribute to him as well. My name is Father Giuseppe Ciavello, by the way. It's at this point that I actually see what he has written. I look up and I say, Father Giuseppe, lovely to meet you. I was about to say more until I read this. You must be a very good man. I feel such joy at having read your words. And please let His Holiness know that the Christ will be back within the hour from now and he will then respond to his emails. I will send you a message when he returns 
then he will write the email and I'll let you know when it is sent. And then I go on to warn the very thing that we are talking about, committing the unpardonable sin. Father Giuseppe, for your own information, and please, if you will convey this to His Holiness, the Holy Ghost is the resurrected soul of Jesus. In other words, it is the Christ today. His resurrected soul worn over like a white garment the glory of His flesh body. Please warn His Holiness that there is no forgiveness for any person who offends the Christ today. All of His life has been rejection and abuse and scoffing, in particular if His Holiness offends the Holy Ghost Brian Leonard go lightly marshal, the angels will take care of him and it won't be pretty. I tell you this out of concern, the children of the world and the meek inherit the earth. In other words, there are not too many adults alive today that the Christ would allow into his kingdom, which is occurring upon the earth. Warn his holiness that he should be showing the utmost respect to the Christ who has no tolerance at this point, anything he has witnessed coming out of Rome. In peace, JM, GM. To which Father Giuseppe replied, Will do, Mrs. Marshall. And then he says, I have a question. What do you mean witnessed out of Rome? And then I go on to explain that the Christ was born into a Catholic family, attended a Catholic school, how he was abused by Brother Lucius, etc., etc., etc. So, that's all up on the script site. You can go over there and read all of the conversations that were happening behind the scenes as the Christ was commuting, commuting, communicating by email with His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI, Peter. That being said, uh, this is introducing the video I've already prepared. I've called it in response to the diatribe uploaded on Francis's Facebook. Uh, they called it the humility of Francis. I have called it the hypocrisy of Francis and torn to pieces his own words. Uh, he is the Antichrist. So, a warning. Anybody hearing this for the first time? Take heed. And for all of you who have already offended, spoken, remember it says spoken against so it doesn't even have to be in his face. Private conversation with somebody else. If you have spoken against the Holy Ghost, you have already committed the unpardonable sin, and there is no way back for you. So that's why it's pointless to try to convert those who have already spoken against the Holy Ghost. Their angels have already taken care of them and cut them off with no way back. Not a happy, but a warning that needs to be issued again.